This year, the United States has seen 23 extreme weather events that created more than a billion dollars each in damages. 18 of the events were severe storms. Two were major floods. Hurricane Idalia and the Maui wildfires also made the billion dollar list, as did February winter storms in the Northeast. As a result of these disasters, homeowners in high risk areas are seeing insurance premiums rise. For some, coverage has been dropped completely. CBS News senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy reports. It's just a magical place to live. Mary Morse was drawn to this Southern California mountain town 17 years ago by the pine trees surrounding her home. I had no idea it was going to end up being an issue. Her insurance company came to see them as fuel for a wildfire. I got a letter from my insurance company that said we're not going to serve your area anymore. They're basically dropping you. Yep. Wildfire is now the fastest growing natural disaster in the U.S. In the next 30 years, the average number of buildings destroyed is expected to nearly double, causing $24 billion in damages. Several major insurance companies are no longer writing new policies in California or pulling out of the market altogether. They're looking at it and saying, listen, we've done the math. Matthew Eby is CEO of First Street Foundation, which studies climate risks. Its new report shows 6.7 million properties in the U.S. have been pushed onto expensive state-created plans known as insurers of last resort, after private insurers dropped them in part because of escalating climate risk. Are we one strategically placed hurricane or one massive megafire away from some of these state-backed plans collapsing? Absolutely. All it takes is one big event in a high concentrated area and you will see uh, financial collapse of those programs. That's a real fear in hurricane prone Florida. Its state created plan now insures nearly 1.4 million high risk properties. Florida has the highest insurance rates in the nation, averaging $6,000 a year. I hate to say it, but it is legalized extortion. Jack Anderson and his husband Kevin live in Key West. The disaster premiums on their modest home were heading towards eight grand a year. So they paid off their entire mortgage to avoid having to carry that insurance. How much did you put towards paying that off? Just over 250000 So It's like, what level of risk can you live with? I guess is really what it comes down to. They are now saving so. for that inevitable rainy day. But as climate impacts grow, so do the risks. And Ben Tracy joins us now. Ben, why are insurance companies allowed to just drop clients? Is that legal? Well, they do it at the end of the policy. And, you know, most policies we have for insurance are like six months or a year. So basically what these companies do is when that policy comes up, they say to the homeowner, we've done the math. And this just does not make sense to insure your home anymore because of wildfire risk or hurricane risk or flooding risk. So then the homeowner is terrified because they've just been told Risks are bigger even than you thought. You've got no coverage. What then do we make of these last resort state-based policies? How effective or useful are those? So these are basically states have decided to create these plans. They're not using taxpayer funds, but they're basically creating an avenue for people who have been dropped by their private insurers to have insurance. So you have a bunch of people paying into these pools. The problem with it is one of the homeowners we interviewed, she said, my premiums doubled and I got less coverage. So it's not great for the homeowner, but it is pumping money into this system. The problem is you have so much risk now pouring into these state-created systems that it's really just one massive storm or one mega fire that takes down a large population center and these programs can collapse. They can collapse and it would kill state budgets, right? I mean, it would, the, if the states are on the hook for this, it affects them. And that's what's never been tried is what happens if one of these collapses, then does the state step in and say, okay, we are now on the hook, we will pay all these claims, or do they say, sorry, you're on your own? And what, uh, which you can't imagine them doing after a disaster, right? Of course, because there's the political element. So what are lawmakers doing at the state uh, level to try to address these issues? Well, and speaking of the politics, that's one of the hard things because the best solution here, and the insurance companies agree with this as well, is these states should allow them to raise their rates, to raise their premiums. Insurance is so highly regulated, especially in a state like California, they can't unilaterally raise the premiums. So the companies are saying, we can't charge you enough to actually cover the risk we're now taking, so we're, we'd rather just not do business here. And the state doesn't want to allow them to raise the premiums because there's a lot of political blowback for that. 
So they're stuck in this situation then where all those homeowners are pushed onto the state system and that could blow up in their face as well. And what are the homeowners doing other than other than panic? I mean, are people talking about leaving? Are is there are our cities and and uh, politicians worried about a drain from these from these areas? Well, you would think so, but the fastest growing state in this country right now is Florida. One of the fastest growing metropolitan areas is Phoenix. So people are actually moving towards these areas where there is more climate risk. I think a lot of them are very surprised when they get their insurance premiums and they realize how much that's going to cost them. And is there anybody in the insurance space, you know, sometimes people seek an opportunity in a, in a moment of turmoil in a market. Uh, you've, you've reported on these companies leaving. Is anybody trying to move in and do anything clever or creative? It's certainly been good for the smaller companies. I mean, when you have big names like State Farm and Allstate saying, you know, we're not going to write new policies in a place like California, that's a huge opportunity for, you know, Joe Smith to yeah. go in there and sell some policies. The question I think long term is, is that person willing to take on this risk as well? Is Joe Smith or his pockets deep enough? Exactly. And Tracy, thanks so much for being here and for the reporting. Thanks, John.